Kinski from My Healthy Beginning. Thanks for joining us today. So I met this savvy gal named Camille a few months back at a networking event. And what I loved about her was her energy. And she came up to me, like approached me right after we were done. It was like one of those meetings where you're like eyeing each other the whole time, knowing that you have to connect. And not only is she a personal trainer, but she is like an air fryer phenom with a little cookbook of recipes. Um, and I always love knowing somebody who does something better than I do because I don't want to take the long and winding road. I want to be given all the tips and tricks. And so we have invited her to join us today and give us all of the information, all the lowdown on uh, air fryers. So Camille, welcome. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. I'm super excited to do this. Anytime that I get to pull out my air fryer and help share it with people, I'm all in super excited. So. Um, the plan for today is I'm going to get started right away by kind of prepping the food for you guys. Well, okay. not for you guys, this is for my lunch, but showing you. Um, I can give you the address. Out. You could drop it off. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we'll be doing, um, starting with the cooking, um, just to time out, getting these three different recipes up and rolling, and then I'll start to answer pretty much those frequently asked questions. What can you cook in it? Which one, which air fryer is right for me? And then we'll go from there. So okay, good. first we're gonna start by um, slicing up potatoes. So french fries are going to take the longest to cook. So I'm going to start by taking baby red potatoes. Um, they're the easiest to cut and they have high potassium, um, which is something that I look for being a personal trainer. So I usually will use my um, potato slicer, um, but since it, I am in the process of packing and moving, I actually have my potato slicer all packed up. So I took the time ahead of time to pre-slice these potatoes. But I'm going to show you just the good old-fashioned way of doing it with a knife. I just did um, nice thin slices on uh, horizontal, and then I'm going to split the potato in half, and then I'm going to finish with um, another row of slices to get those kind of shoestring-style French fries. Um, you can also do sweet potato fries in the air fryer as well, though for sweet potato fries, you're definitely going to want to go low and slow. Those sugars that are in the sweet potatoes take quite a bit longer to um, break down, so you want to cook it at a lower heat, otherwise you're going to get those sweet potatoes burnt. Another pro tip, especially when it comes to french fries, so here's what those look like all done up, is you definitely want to soak your french fries in some water for at least five minutes, but you could do this in advance, up to 24 hours in advance. Um, so the reason for doing this is to help pull those starches off of your potatoes and it's going to give you a crispier result in the air fryer. Oh, I love, okay. love I'm that. Using, yeah, it's something I read um, early on looking up the recipes and it is, it makes a big difference. It's an easy step to take. So I'm just going to do one layer of french fries here, understanding that the, the thicker the layer of french fries, the longer it's going to take. Um, and I'm just going right. to do just those wet potatoes, and I'm just going to use an all-purpose seasoning, um, but you could use whatever you'd like. So for this air fryer, I'm going to be using my Power XL. So this one, I believe, is like a six quart, and I'm going to do it at 325 for 18 minutes. I'm going to do actually 350 um, for this specific air fryer. And we're going to do it for 18 minutes. So fries is probably the longest thing that it takes to cook in the air fryer. But if you're comparing it to if you were to cook it in the oven, it takes about 45 minutes to cook one batch of fries. Right. Um, but on that as well, I actually like to um, use, both, use my oven in kind of a partnership with my air fryer. So I actually got my start in air fryers when I did my first bodybuilding show. I compete in natural bodybuilding competitions, and as a result of that, I watch what I eat pretty closely. But I love that crispy, crunchy, delicious soul food, so I found the air fryer to be the perfect tool to be able to get that crispy, crunchy taste that I was after, but without all of those extra fats added. So that's kind of how I got started in the air fryer world. And um, what I like to do when I'm bulk cooking for the entire week is I'll actually cut up an entire bag of baby red potatoes and then I'll put them in water and I'll let them soak and then I'll fill two cookie sheets um, and cook them in the oven about three quarters of the way through so you don't want them to be crispy crunchy because then I keep an air fryer at work 
Um, so then I'll pull those three quarters cooked um, fries and I'll heat that up while I'm at work to give it, get it mm -hmm. finished cooking and then heat okay. it up as well. Um, so if you do have an air fryer at work, that's definitely what I recommend. Um, cooking a ton of them at one time. So now that we've got those fries in and ready to roll, we're going to move on to the jalapeno poppers. Mm. So for this, um, I just use regular jalapeno peppers and I'm going to slice it right down the center. And you can just leave the stems on, they usually will fall off to one side. Um, and then what you're gonna do, uh, because I'm not uh, the biggest spice person, so if, you, if you're gonna be serving this as like a family function and you don't want it to be like super hot, I would highly recommend taking a spoon and getting out those seeds and the white kind of flesh in part of the jalapeno pepper, that's gonna take away a lot of that heat. So I just take my spoon, kind of draw a line cut around it, and then I'm gonna scoop it out straight into the trash. We're just gonna go in here. And then kind of knock out the rest of those seeds as well. Obviously be mindful anytime you're working with a hot pepper to make sure not to get it in or on your face um, and just strip out the rest of those seeds to give it nice and clean. So now we have a little bit of a boat going on there. I'm just gonna do two poppers today. Um, and this is great to do for like Super Bowl parties or anytime you're having a football party or um, an office get together. These tend to be a really big fan favorite. Um, this isn't something that you know, most people eat on a daily basis, but it's a really fun party order. Um, easy to make. All we're using is literally three ingredients. We're using the jalapeno poppers, some bacon, and then just some cream cheese. And for the cream cheese, if you're looking for a low fat option, you can of course use low fat um, cream cheese, um, or you can use a higher fat depending on what you're looking for. Like I said, a lot of these recipes I created um, when I was looking to conserve my overall calories, so they tend to be a little bit lower fat option. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm but I also think you could probably yeah. use the dairy-free cream cheeses too for this. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And you know, online, you can make it as simple or as complex as you want it. So sure. in the past, I've taken cream cheese, I'll mix it with shredded cheese and some ranch powder and some chives. But I find that it's not that much more of a difference if I just use cream cheese. So for the sake of keeping it easy, I'm just sure. going to use cream cheese today. And I literally just take a scoop out, fill it just um, up to the top so it's not overflowing. So you kind of just smear it. Um, straight across and then we're going to wrap those in bacon anything wrapped in bacon you've right? you've won right. my heart <laughs> turkey bacon as well um, those turn out really well um, and you know you can use nitrate free bacon kind of whatever you're looking for in the, that department um, and you can kind of make these ahead of time like I said and just crisp them up, get that bacon nice and crispy right before you go. So you can have them either all cut, filled, wrapped, and then just toss them in before you go. Or you can um, get them pre-cooked and then just kind of warm them up in the air fryer once you're ready to do them for an event. Um, anything I can do ahead of time, I always try to just to make it easier. So we got all of our jalapenos stuffed and filled. Now we're gonna take our I'm using some nitrate-free bacon um, from Aldi here. I'm just gonna take one piece per jalapeno. And I definitely prefer using the longer strips of bacon. Sometimes you can buy the, um, you'll see in the packages, it'll be a little bit shorter. Um, I definitely prefer the longer ones because you want it to be able to wrap all the way around the whole popper so it cooks nice and evenly. And if you can, try to wrap it so the ends are ending up on the bottom. That's just going to make your life easier once it goes into the air fryer. What a great whole food snack. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, there's not a ton of nutrition happening in this one, um, but it is, I love that sweet, or that like kind of spicy, creamy, get the savory with the bacon. I am, I don't have a sweet tooth, so a lot of my um, go-tos for the air fryer are savory options. So. 
this, you know, born and raised in Wisconsin, you can't have a football game without some jalapeno poppers. <laughs> For all you Vikings fans, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. All right. And then um, bacon is actually, honestly, bacon is one of, I would say that most people, if you were going to buy an air fryer to only cook one food in it, I would cook bacon in the air fryer. You're not cooking bacon in your air fryer, you're doing it wrong. I have not even, I don't know why I haven't. So I'm so, yes, got to do that. And so why I like, so if you're going to cook bacon for like, you know, a family of six or a bigger household, I would just go with the oven and you put the tin foil on the bottom and lay them all out and cook them in the oven. But if you're like me and you only have one other person in your household, I'm not trying to cook an entire package of bacon every time I want bacon in the morning. So the air fryer is perfect because you can literally just throw one slice of bacon in and it will cook it perfectly. And you don't have to deal with the grease. You don't have to sit over it and make sure it gets ready. You can literally throw all your bacon in the air fryer, go upstairs, go put your makeup on, go do your hair, whatever it is that you have to do, come back, your bacon's ready to roll. Um, Mm -hmm. breakfast is probably my most used, um, time that I use my air fryer. I use it for breakfast almost every single day, um, for bacon. And then you can also toast things in it as well. So like I'll take my buns and I'll put them cut side up on top of the air fryer. Um, and I'll let that go through, um, as well. You just pull it out. It takes like less than two minutes to toast something. So it's really an all in one appliance. And another thing I love about the air fryer, especially the smaller tub ones, like what we're working with here today, is that you can kind of layer the things that you're cooking. So like what I'm gonna do right now is I have obviously the fries in the bottom of the air fryer and I'm going to put all my jalapeno covers on top of the fries since the fries have to really cook through first and then we'll be looking to crisp them up. But this way, all of that bacon fat's going to kind of run over my french fries and make my french fries taste like bacon. So if you're tracking your macros and you already accounted for all the fat in your bacon, you better get the best use out of it. A lot of times I'll do burger patties. Again, I'm not trying to make 14 burgers at a time or I don't want to fire up the whole grill. I'll cook one burger patty, put it in there, and then I'll put a piece of bacon over the top so that bacon fat runs over my burger as I'm cooking with it. So I'm gonna pop these in the air fryer over the top of my french fries. This is also gonna help to prevent over drying in the air fryer. Um, That is definitely one of the biggest uh, drawbacks, I guess you could say, of an air fryer is the risk to overcook something or for it to be too dry. So some solutions for that are obviously like we're talking about going through the top and bottom cooking of kind of cooking and layering so that that those fats are cooking over what you're like the french fries or you can use just some cooking spray hit it with a quick spritz of uh cooking spray just to add a little bit of moisture to that surface without adding a whole lot of fat calories to it as well um so the jalapeno poppers are going to go in for about eight minutes so we'll keep an eye on that i am going to get started working on the bluegill so in the promotion i had that we were going to be doing um, popcorn chicken or chicken strips, which is by and large the most fan favorite of Cami's Cafe recipes. Um, kids love it. It's great. High protein, low fat, pretty much fits in any diet wherever you're looking. And the same for it's gluten-free as well. Um, because I actually use uh, Rice Krispies or crispy rice <laughs> as my breading um, because it's gluten-free and mostly because I'm really lazy and I don't want to have to dig out bread, you know, make your own breadcrumbs or smash your own rice checks. I used to use rice checks and blend them up in either like a coffee grinder or um, just uh, smash them up in a bowl, but I've gone one step farther than that, making it easier on myself um, by using Rice Krispies. So I literally just poured a plate of Rice Krispies here and then I put some all seasoning over the top and we're going to bread our bluegill right now. So let me see. I think I'll be able to give you guys a close-up look of this. Perfect. So right here we have, um, like I said, we're using this with bluegill. And so all I'm going to do is I don't actually use an egg white when I do chicken or fish. 
as long as it is has some moisture to it, it's gonna stick to the Rice Krispies because you're kind of gonna press it in. And you know, you can bread it as heavily as you want to. I'm just gonna do kind of a light breading for today. Give it a little bit of some crisp to it. So I'm just gonna take pieces here and try to coat my fish. Um, you could absolutely use a traditional panko um, breadcrumb here, or you could use, like I said, a more finely milled um, rice checks ground up um, to make it more like a flour consistency. It kind of depends on what you're going for. Um, I go for convenience, especially with kids. If they have a little bit of these crispies on it, it makes it feel like a fried chicken. Um, so like my four and six year old nieces, they're pretty picky eaters, but they absolutely love to make their own chicken tenders. So you just buy the chicken tenderloins if you're looking for the easiest. And then same thing, just smash it into those crispies. And then we're gonna layer, we're gonna put those in the air fryer as well. I'm gonna wait until the poppers and fries are done before I do that. Um, just to watch out for the cross contamination there, some raw meat. Um, but really easy, and so if you're looking for jalapeno poppers, it's going to be the fastest that the food is going to cook. Um, so for that, I would, you just take a regular chicken breast, and you're going to just slice up, or I like to use food scissors a lot of times too, and just give it a, just chunk it up into one inch cubes. And then again, you can even just throw it into a bag with the Rice Krispies because it um, has moisture on it, so it's going to stick. Um, I think that's all I'm going to cook. For today, I don't need a ton of um, fish going on, so let me wash my hands and then we'll get into kind of some questions. All right. So, a lot of the times, the first question is what air fryer is going to be right for me? Which air fryer should I buy? And my answer is, it depends on what you're looking for. So the most budget-friendly option that's great for cooking for one or maybe two people, or if you're only ever looking to cook your meals fresh, um, like if you were at work, for example, if you're looking for a air fryer for your workplace, I would definitely recommend going with the Bella, which is this one right here. That's on the back of my cookbook, um, which I'll get to in a second. And so that one's about $60. It comes in and out of stock on Amazon. I do have an Amazon affiliate link if you're interested. If not, cool, order it wherever. You can pick them up at Kohl's too. Um, they have them at a bunch of different stores. The most popular option I would say is actually the Power XL. So this one, um, because it has the copper lining on the inside, we got nice crisping up there, a couple minutes left for that. Um, so that one, the Power XL runs about $100, so it's a little bit more. It is a little bit bigger than the Bella. The Bella can fit about two chicken breasts. The Power XL behind me can fit about four. And the one that I use on a day-to-day -day basis from now, this is now, I have four different air fryers that I've tried. Um, like I said, I love trying different air fryers and trying different food. Um, and so the one that I currently love the most for my daily lifestyle is the Instant Omni Air Fryer. And it's actually one of the bigger ones that has two levels in it. And I like that one because I can cook all of my meat at the same time mm. for the entire week. So I can cook, I've had 10 chicken thighs and room to spare within the other air fryer. Um, and it also has a dehydrate function, which I love. We've made apple chips. You can make beef jerky, um, banana chips with that as well. And there is also a rotisserie function for like Cornish hen. Um, so that's just kind of fun for that. But I love that it's so much bigger. It has two racks. So I can be cooking, you know, all of my French fries on the bottom. And I can be cooking 10 chicken thighs on the top. Um, I would say the thing that, that I most commonly, in that air fryer, excuse me, the Instant Omni, the large rectangle one with the door that drops down in front as opposed to the bucket ones, um, that one is $160. And let me kind of go through, I guess, the pros and cons of each of them. Yeah. 
the biggest con of this one, which you'll hear in a minute here, is it beeps five times when it's done cooking. And it's, it's not just a soft beep. It's a very loud, <laughs> piercing beep. And honestly, I don't, it's a big deal for me because you hear, I use it all the time. So it's not just like a once a day thing. If I'm using the air fryer five times a day, I don't want to hear 25 beeps. So that's definitely the biggest drawback for that one, though it does have a nice nonstick finish. Um, the Bella, the smaller $60 one, um, some reviews have had problems with like the lining coming up with the food. I never had any issues with that. I've since gifted that air fryer to my sister-in-law. Um, I kind of buy a new air fryer, give it to someone I like, <laughs> and then kind of move on from there. Um, and that one just has a dial, which uh, like, a, like a traditional kitchen timer, you know, ding just once. Um, so I really like that. My numbers did eventually fade off after years. Um, I really like how the, the Bella and this one drain. I'll show you how to clean it um, at the end. They, all of them are dishwasher friendly. Um, but I, I like the bucket ones because it keeps the grease all on a separate shelf. And then after the food is done, you can take out the basket to take out your food. And then the grease is just left in the bottom bucket. And you can literally just take the bucket and dump it into your grease collector. Um, so it's really easy for that one. The larger one with two levels is harder to clean because A, it has a glass window, and it when you pull out the tray to check on the food, it drips onto the glass. So it's not great if you like things to be super sparkly clean all the time, but my air fryers live on the counter always and they get used and abused daily. So that the cleanliness factor doesn't bother me, but it is something to be aware of um, if that's the one you're looking for. Um, and then it does have a drip tray um, to pull out and kind of like a cookie sheet on the bottom that catches the grease. So you have to have an oven mitt to pull that out and then to drain it out of one corner into your um, grease container. So that is a little bit more cumbersome than this one, but just depends on what you're looking to use it for. For this Power XL, I can cook about one 16 ounce package of ground beef into meatballs in one layer. I might have a couple meatballs on top, like two or three. But with my um, Instant Omni, the large one, I can cook you know, the biggest pack of ground beef that I can buy and make it into burgers, you know, meatballs. That would, I, I would say that I cook meatballs, like the second most popular thing that I cook in my air fryer behind bacon. Bacon's every day. Meat, ground beef meatballs is like every single week at least. Um, and if you are, you know, looking to really conserve all those fat calories, you can do ground turkey as well. And what I like about doing ground beef or ground beef or ground turkey meatballs, and I don't, um, you can put in like minced onion um, and then just seasoning. Like I said, I keep it really simple. I find that the more complex a recipe is, the less likely I'm going to use it and continue to use it. So I like to keep my recipes really simple just for that best risk reward payoff and putting a little bit of minced onion in with your ground beef is going to help make that moisture stay in that burger and give it a lot of really good flavor with that. How long does it take for the meatballs? Yeah, so the ground meat. Okay, listen. Okay, there's two, three, four, five. I had to let all of them go because it's a factor. It's part of it. Yes. Um, so for Press ground meat. Anger, 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 what do they call it? Call it anger management. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, maybe it's not a big deal to anybody, but so funny. Know, it would drive me nuts. Before. Yeah. Yeah, it does. Um, so for ground beef, it usually is like 15 minutes um, Great. at like that 370, 380 mark. And again, yeah. that's, let me check these first. Oh, yeah. We're going to get a close up on that because these are looking delicious. Ooh, oh, my gosh. Gosh. Yes, so I'm going to pull yeah. those poppers out because those are looking good. And I'm going to give my them kids would be like, are we having this for lunch? <laughs> right? Yeah. You could. I mean, it's easy enough to. Um, we always have jalapenos at the house. We like to put them on our burgers and things like that, too. So it's great if you're just looking to make a snack for one person. Okay, yeah, so I guess that's part of it, too. So you can take it out. So this is the receptacle, and then this pumps out. And then to stir it, I just kind of shake it. Um, let me see. These are actually looking pretty good. They need a little bit longer. Um, so yeah, I'm going to give those 
two more minutes and then that's that's another you part you take too. out like the say the grate or the part that's holding the fries that can go in the dishwasher yeah yep that whole piece that i picked up and shook that can go straight into the dishwasher um i usually just hand wash it just because I'm oh. probably looking to use my air fryer right away. Like I said, this guy lives on the counter. Right. Um, but yeah, yeah, easy to do if it's not like your daily um, routine for that. Um, yeah, I just kind of poke the air, the fries a little bit. They look to like 90% of the way done. I'm just going to give them two more minutes to kind of give that final cook through and to give them direct access from the fryer to give them that final crisp up. And then we'll be putting the fish in and kind of waiting for that. Um, okay, so. I love the fish idea because I grew up eating like Schwann's, you know, fish sticks. Goodness knows what was all in there. Right. So, I mean, just even seeing a crispy rice with just, you're like, that's so simple. It's, so it's simple. super easy. And, you know, if you were looking for something that would be closer to like what you would get at a restaurant, you would probably want to use a traditional breadcrumb, panko, or um, something finer milled just to get it closer looking like at the restaurant. But like I said, I'm just looking for a little bit of crunch right. on what I'm going in with it. Um, with right. When cooking fish in yeah. the air fryer, most of the time when we eat breaded fish, there's a heavy, um, they're deep fried. So there's a heavy fat yeah. flavor that comes through with it. So you definitely miss that overlying fat that pulls through with the fish because it is so lean. Um, so I like to lean into the brightness of the fish. So I'm actually going to top my fish with a little bit of lemon, um, and lean into that brighter side of things rather yeah. than trying to hit into that savory mommy flavor for the fish. Um, but like mm -hmm. I said, if you wanted to, you could put either oil, a little bit of oil on top of the fish, um, to give it a little bit more of that fat flavor, or you could cook bacon over the top of it. There's a lot of different ways to kind of get whatever you're looking for. Um, which brings me to, I like the air fryer because I can have crispy, crunchy, delicious soul food, and I don't have to worry about all the extra fat calories like I do when it's in a restaurant. I have to worry about what do they cook it in and things like that. Okay. Not today. <laughs> I'm going to stop that. that I'm going to dump these fries. And so I'm going to pull up here, lay it out on top, and then I'm going to place these guys in. I bet the fish cooks up really fast. Yes, yep. And again, same thing there is, you know, anytime you're working with an air fryer, there's a risk of over drying it. Um, but because we had so much, and I just, this is the laziest I've ever gotten when cooking in the air fryer. I'll just toss in like either the chicken tenderloins or the cut up chicken breast, and I'll literally just dump on top the rice krispies. I, you can, I'm real lazy when it comes to my everyday life, um, so you don't even, you can even skip that step. Obviously, only the top is going to be um, covered. I'm going to put it in there for seven minutes. Sometimes it's six, sometimes it's eight, depending on how thick those lays are going to be. Um, the chicken, it being cubes, is going to be about that closer to that six to seven minutes. Okay. The chicken tenderloins is going to be closer to that eight to nine minutes. Um, a chicken, a full chicken breast is going to be more like 20 to 22 minutes. Um, still a ton faster than, you know, other traditional methods of cooking. And, but honestly, if I'm going to eat a chicken breast, I'm just going to cut it and eat it, cook it up faster because I'm usually going to eat it cook, um, cut up anyways um, with that. Uh, so, but reasons like other people like the air fryer, it's easy to clean. and it's a set it and forget it type of appliance. Like that's why my boyfriend really likes it because he can, his version of meal prepping is taking his meat, cramming it into a meatball, throws it in the air fryer, he goes, takes a shower, comes back. He's like, all right, I'm done. Yeah. Uh, so it, the ease of it all is really great. So for like, you know, men that don't like to cook a lot, I mean, maybe female, there's no singling out here. Um, anyone who doesn't like to cook a lot um, or, you know, who do, is, doesn't really feel familiar with it, you, the air fryer is easy because it does most of the work for you and you don't have to be mentally attentive while you're cooking. Mm -hmm. um, so you can be doing other things. You can be cleaning up the kitchen, you can be you know, listening to a podcast. It's not so attentive. You can even go in the other room and it'll be when it's ready so you can come back mm -hmm. and turn it back. 
Right. So that's why he really likes it because it's easy. You just dump out the grease after you don't even have to do a ton of dishes. Um, it, it's just all in one place and it's so multi-purpose. Like for burgers, I would cook my fries on the bottom. I would put two burger patties on top and then I put my bacon on top of that. So it all kind of cooks down from there. Um, that's something I do a ton. It's probably not what most people do when they're cooking. They tend to cook things like really separate. Um, but if you think about the time that you're cooking them, so the order which you'll have to pull them out, that just tends to make the most sense. Um, so a lot of the recipes that are in my cookbook, which my cookbook is actually sold out currently. This is my last air fryer cookbook, which I'm actually bringing to someone later today. Um, and so if you are interested in a air fryer cookbook, I can sell you the PDF version and can send it to you immediately. Um, this retails for $12, but if you would be interested in the PDF, I can do that for $8, um, just so you can have it immediately. A lot of the time, so I chose to do mostly hard copy because you can find tons and tons of recipes on Pinterest um, and on Google in general. So by no means is, you know, the majority of the recipes in this cookbook aren't miraculously novel. It mostly is a tool for how do you, how do you cook or with the air fryer? How do you use the appliance and what are the cooking translation times? That's the majority of what right. this cookbook is, is a convenience package. Something to be able to flip to and be like, okay, French fries, how, what temperature, how long? And, you know, I have my, this cookbook sorted by macros, being a personal trainer, that's very important to me. Um, so macros are proteins, fats, and carbohydrates. And so I have all my recipes ordered from proteins, carbohydrates, and fats, and then some kind of all-in-one recipes there. So you can cook any type of fish in the air fryer, which is great because it contains all the smell and um, really just makes it easy clean up. You don't have to stink up your whole house. Same with that's why bacon is really nice um, for that. You can also put um, different accessories in the air fryer. So you can put in any Pyrex dish. So any glass Tupperware you can put right into the air fryer. Just make sure you use a hot pad when you go to take it out. Um, but so you can cook things like cookies or banana bread or cinnamon rolls. Anything that's in the freezer section is going to cook up amazingly in the air fryer. So it's great for those kids that are, you know, in that preteen teen area where they're just starting to get into cooking um, for themselves. Great way because you don't have to worry so much about the heat safety because as long as they hold on to the handle, they're going to be okay and probably not burn themselves. So that's a great way to get those um, in between teen tweens. Uh, to get interested into cooking for themselves as well. So yes, I will be doing another reorder of the physical books on July 1st. So if you'd like a pre-order, send me a message, find me, I'll put you on the list um, and get that to you as soon as I do a reorder. We got three minutes left on the perch and that, or um, on the bluegill, and then we'll wrap it up um, from there. So let's I have a question. Look. Yes. So on a whim, uh, we had we had just a regular toaster oven, yeah. and a few months back when we were at Costco, my husband's like, "Oh, we should get we should get a a new toaster oven that's got this built-in air fryer." And so I had heard you and I had already met. I was thinking, okay, this would be super great. Of course, I was thinking French fries. <laughs> like yep. I hadn't broadened my horizons much beyond that yet. Um, but we do sweet potato fries and fries in it all the time, and it's amazing. Now it's a Cuisinart, so, and it can do all the things, it can broil, it can, so I do, I do love it because we literally use it multiple times per day, but not the air fryer piece. And I realize it's that piece where I'm like, oh, like I don't know what else I can do in there yet. Now it just has like one little tray and then it has like a kind of a basket, right? But, yep. but not deep, it's really narrow. So mm -hmm. I have to do it like three times if I want enough fries for a family of five for dinner. So. I'm actually seeing like maybe what we should have done is kept our smaller toaster oven and then purchased a larger air fryer for like having, oh. I mean, I could maybe, maybe I could fit 24 small meatballs on there, but I'd never considered, I'd never, I'd never considered meatballs like or yeah, doing a patty or anything. I, I like meatballs because they're so multi-purpose once they're already cooked. So like my boyfriend will grab two or three of them and put them in a tortilla with barbecue sauce and vegetables. Sure. And he'll eat them as like a yeah. 
So um, good. I'll eat them. I'll grab a couple, two, three, four. They're really easy to portion out as well when they're already in the meatball portion. You don't have to deal with the ground beef situation. Um, you can use them for tacos. Break them apart and you have taco meat. Add some taco seasoning to the top. Um, I use it a lot of times with, I'll pair it with my rice and then some frozen vegetables and you just have ground beef with it. Ground beef pairs really well with sweet potatoes. So if I do a mashed sweet potato, I'll just eat it alongside that as well. Or my favorite way is um, spaghetti and meatballs. That's just my favorite meal. So that's how I like to use it. Or you can use the spaghetti squash as well. So it's really multi-purpose. You can cook a ton of ground beef meatballs at one time and not have to eat the same exact meals, seven meals in a row. Right. You can use them for different types of meals sure. um, for that as well. All right. That looks done enough. We'll oh, take a look and see these. what that. Oh my gosh, my kids would love that. Yeah, it's super easy to do. Um, and obviously I have some of them skin side up and skin side down here. Um, I'm just going to put these on my serving tray. Let me put you up here. There we go. Um, and then I'll show you how, you know, I clean out the air fryer just because that's again, another really frequently asked question. Um, where to get them. Amazon tends to have the best prices. I see um, them in stores be really high, highly priced. So I tend to just get it right off of Amazon. Like I said, I do have Amazon affiliate links um, if anyone's interested in which one. But any air fryer is going to be fine. It doesn't have to be a specific brand. This air fryer cookbook was made off of the Power XL, um, which is really similar to the Bella. But so um, you just take both of them connected um, so that you can get the grease. Let me show you here. And then you literally just pour out the grease and then I would just fill this up with soap and water into the sink and then clean it right from there. Um, so yeah, let's get a final look at the food we made today and then we'll pass it off for you guys, let you have a good rest of your lunch. It looks so good. <laughs> It is the final result. I'm excited yeah. to eat lunch today. <laughs> right. Yeah, I'm so sad you have to do that by yourself. <laughs> yeah, right? You should right. do like in-house air fryer demo. Yeah, that would be yeah, really Yeah, so, and I've gone to different health fairs and done these demos as well and done sampling. Right. Um, this is typically the meal that I go with because it's, like I said, the most fan favorite um, of them all. But, I mean, who wouldn't want this pile of fries on their plate at a restaurant? Right. I know I'd be happy with any of this food if it but got put down in front of me. And it obviously right. took, you know, just under 40 minutes to do all of this start to finish. And that was with a lot of rambling talking going on. Yeah. So can you, when we get off, can you email, or maybe you could do it right now, the Amazon affiliate link, and then we could yeah. include it in the thread for this post. Sure. Yeah, yeah no that would be great. And then also the um, how people would reach out to you for the cookbook, how they could reach yeah. you. Yeah, I have both of those things on my website. So I'll just send you over my website link. If you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see all three air fryers um, and then where to purchase my cookbook as well. So I'll sure. send that over to you. It's shinebikini.com slash mind dash body dash soul. S O W L E. Okay. But I'll send it to you as well so people can have that. Awesome. But yeah, guys, that's it. So hopefully this was, um, you know, educational. Totally. I'm showing you what different types of foods you can cook in the air fryer. I toast my English muffins in all the time for breakfast. You can even use a small Pyrex and crack an egg into it. Make sure you spray it with cooking spray so it'll make it perfect size for a breakfast sandwich. Oh, that's that's kind of a good idea. Life hack to oh, s'mores or use sweet tooth. S'mores, take a little graham cracker, a little bit of peanut butter, stick it to the marshmallow to the graham cracker. Toss it in the air fryer, you have a perfectly cooked s'more in like three minutes. I am it's not going to tell my kids about that one. <laughs> right? They're going to be like, we'll like every day. Every day <laughs> making s'mores. <laughs> but it's perfect just for one meal. You don't have to go crazy. For That's sure. That's why I love the air fryer. Right. So I get bored and they're like experimenting and trying with different variety of foods. So yeah. I've really taken to the air fryer quite well. And I'm definitely, if, any question, if anyone has questions at any time, about air fryers or you know what's your favorite meal to cook or whatever um definitely reach out to me if you go to facebook.com slash air fryer friday i post weekly air fryer recipes so sometimes. good um there's more contact info there as well that is awesome okay we do need to wrap it up on our end thank you so much for your time and this is great i can't wait to give some of these a try at home my kids will be happy about like making fish sticks and they love chicken nuggets so this would definitely make it more quickly 
um, awesome smooth for us at home. So um, that would be great. Thanks again for joining us. Super appreciate awesome. it. You are super welcome. Bye. Bye.